Hello students, I am Sumi Agrawal from APJ School of Architecture and Planning. This lecture is from History of Architecture and today's topic is Ancient Greek Civilization. This slide shows the contents that we are going to discuss through this lecture. It will be mainly focused on classical period of Greece. The main subheadings that we are going to cover are the brief introduction, the orders in architecture which include Doric, Ionic and Corinthian orders, the optical corrections in architecture, Greek city planning, Acropolis and temple architecture and last is the Agora. The ancient Greek civilization can be divided broadly into three main periods. The first one is the Helladic Greece period which spans from 3000 BC to 1050 BC. This is followed by a phase known as Dark Ages where the isolated communities formed after the collapse of Mycenaean culture were emerging. The second period is the Hellenic period. In this again there are two periods. It can be divided into two phases. One is pre-Hellenic and the other is post-Hellenic. The pre-Hellenic, which is also known as archaic period, shows the development of new city-states that have started. And the post-Hellenic, which is also known as classical period, which spans from 480 BC to 323 BC, this is the most important period of ancient Greek civilization as most of the development has taken place during this period. The third period is the Hellenistic period, which is from 323 BC to 30 BC. This starts from the death of Alexander to the conquest of Romans. The lecture is mainly focused on the classical period, which we are going to discuss in detail. Now, let us discuss about the architectural characteristics of the ancient Greek period. First, we will discuss about the elements that are seen in the buildings of ancient Greek architecture. In this, the most important are the walls. These walls are made up of stone masonry in which we see from coarse rubble to fine ashlar. Both the things are seen here. The mortar is not used here. The joints are very fine and they, they have tried to minimize the uh, joints in between. The stones or marble block were jointed by metal clamps and dovels. The stone walls have very beautiful marbles, marble stucco work. The exterior of the buildings were decorated by colonnades which is one of the important features again. Colonnades means the series of columns that are used here. The windows are rarely used and the roofs which are mostly sloping have terracotta or marble tiles as their covering material. The most important materials that are seen in Greek architecture were stone, timber and clay. Out of all the three materials, stone is the most common construction material that is used. This is because Greece has abundant supply of stone, particularly the marble. This marble is used in all types of temple as well as civic construction. The Greek architecture is also known as carpentry in marble. This is because the artistic skill of refined carvings that was previously seen in timber structure was imitated in the marble here. And this also adds beauty to the marble construction. The characteristic gray color of the stone of this area is also what gives most ancient Greek buildings their characteristic color. Another material that is used is timber. But this material has its limitations. It has a limited length. So it is 
used only in roofs that too in limited width only few buildings like parthenon are there where we could see that it has gone beyond a certain width the third material that is seen is clay now clay is used in the form of sun dried blocks and it is seen mostly in house construction the principal construction system that was used was striated that means the column and beam construction combination of column and beam construction the spans were limited because architraves were made of single stone block construction technology involves ordering stones in semi prepared state from quarries from where they were brought to site they were roughly shaped and placed in position on the buildings the rough stones were then finished to achieve the final form and treatment of the building it is in finishing that the greeks showed their mastery of construction as as they were artistic by nature finishing work involved in creating the fluting base and capital decoration on columns the frieze and cornice of the buildings that were the part of entablature were also decorated with appropriate relief carving made of forms from nature pediments were also finished with relief carvings which in temples depict stories of the god full statues of gods were also carved and placed on strategic places outside as well as in the interiors of the temple the greeks essentially formalized architectural sculpture and decoration they basically very effectively translated the idea of beauty into tangible buildings we have already discussed that the columns are one of the important elements of greek buildings now let us see what do we mean by the classical orders of greek greek architecture were basically post and beam construction which is also known as striated the post or column refers to the entire set of form that makes up the principal elevation of the temple greeks invented the classical orders of architecture and their invention was a result of the search for a rational method of expressing beauty the orders embody a system of proportion that determines how the whole building looks an order is composed of basically three main parts the base the upright column which is also known as shaft and the capital another important part is the horizontal entablature that is above the capital all the dimensions of the column are derived from the diameter of the column that is if the diameter of the column is taken as d then the height of the column may be proportionately taken as 70 or 90 or any other proportion that is fixed for that particular order the entablature is further divided into architrave frieze and cornice the arrangement of the entablature and the proportion of its different parts are again derived from the diameter of the column base greeks were credited with originating the three orders of the classical language of architecture these were the doric order ionic order and corinthian order columns were understood by the greeks to be anthropomorphic or representative of the body of a human the base suggests the feet the shaft the torso and the capital the head doric was the earliest which resembles the power of a man it has a square capital the ionic was taller in its proportion it has volute capital and it resembles the proportion of a maiden 
Corinthian has the same characteristic as Ionic, except that the capital is decorated with acanthus leaves. Each of these three orders, that is the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian order, has its own conventions about the design of entablature. Through this slide, we will compare some more features of these three orders. The Doric order was the earliest to be developed. It is taken from the temple of Parthenon, built in 438 BC in Athens. The Ionic order evolved and took its name from Iona in modern day Turkey. The order is taken from the temple of Erechtheon built in 409 BC. The Corinthian order takes its name from the city of Corinth in Greece. Doric columns are the simplest. They have capital made of circle topped by a square abacus. It is plain without any decoration. The shaft is short and wide and has 20 flutes. There is no base in the Doric order. The shaft is seven times the diameter of the base of the column. The Ionic order stands on the pedestal. It includes the capital, shaft and base and height of 9 to 10 times its diameter. It has 24 flutes, which is more than that of the Doric column, even though it is smaller in diameter. The Corinthian column is the most beautifully ornate of the three orders and represents the figure of a maiden. The height of the column is 10 times the diameter of the base. The order was not extensively used during the Greek period. It became more popular during the ancient Roman period. When we compare the capital of the three orders, we find that the Doric order has very simple capital. The Ionic order has a capital developed from a pair of volute, about two-thirds the diameter of the column in height. The ornaments are used to decorate the area between the capital and the volute. One of the limitations of the Ionic order is that it is designed to be seen from the front only. At the corners of rectangular building, an angular volute has to be used. Entices are not applied to the Ionic columns. The capital of the Corinthian order is the most beautiful out of three. It is shaped like an inverted bell. The bell-like capital is decorated with rows of carved acanthus leaves. Because of its symmetry, the Corinthian capital, unlike the Ionic capital, is designed to be seen from all directions. Even the entablature of the three orders is designed differently. In this slide, we will discuss about the optical corrections used by the Greeks. The main focus of the Greeks were on the aesthetics of the building. They wanted to create visually perfect buildings. For this, they adopted some of the optical corrections. All the buildings are arranged with a slight curve to correct for optical illusion when they are viewed. This is done to counteract the concave appearance produced by straight edges in perspective. The drawing to the right explains this. Diagram 1 on top shows how the ancient Greeks wants the temple to appear. If the temple is built without correction, then diagram 2 shows how it would actually appear. To ensure that it appears correctly as desired in 1, the Greeks introduced the distortions shown in diagram 3. The list of the distortions that they used were curved entablature and stylobat, columns inclined towards the inside, the columns were wider in the middle, the corner columns were wider than the rest of the columns, different distances between the columns. The best example of the application of optical corrections is found in the Parthenon temple. The application of entices is an expression of the desire for perfection by Greek architects. Entices refers to the slight convex curve in the shaft of a column introduced to correct the visual illusion of concavity to 
produced by straight shaft. Columns that are straight appear thinner in the middle when seen against light, making the supports appear flimsy. The middle bulge counteracts this. The upper two-third of the shaft to the right are tapered. We will now discuss about the Greek city planning and its design. The ancient Greek civilization has established principles for planning and designing cities. Cities were basically of two types. One, the old cities, for example Athens, it has irregular street plans and it showed the gradual organic development, whereas the new cities like Miletus and Prain, especially these cities were colonial cities and established during Hellenistic period, they have grid iron street planning. They were planned on five steps. Firstly, the city was cut by several main streets crossing at right angle. The resulting rectangles were subdivided into blocks. The blocks were further subdivided into house plots. Public buildings were placed according to, uh, accordingly to avoid congestion. And the plan of the city was based on particular terrain. So these were the five steps followed by the planning in new cities. In both the type of city forms, the city was divided into three main parts. One was the Acropolis, the second Agora and third was the town. And the design was centered mainly so as to have a good view of the building that is to appreciate the building from outside. The Acropolis was the city of temples and all the major temples of the city were located here. To glorify the gods, it was placed on top of the hill, considered high places to be important and sacred. So they located the Acropolis on the highest ground of the city. The Agora was considered as the heart of Greek intellectual life and discourse. It started as an open area where the council of the city met to take decisions. With time, buildings were constructed to define and enclose the space. It was transformed into a place for combined social, commercial and political activities. So it acted as a plaza. It became as one of the most important gathering places in the Greek city. It was usually located on the flat ground for ease of communication and placed easily accessible from all directions. It is also located close to the Acropolis and was considered that the gods are taking care of the entire city. The third part of the city, that is the town, was mainly the residential part where the common people lived. This was the domain of women who did not have any public role. Athens is a very good example of a typical ancient Greek city. The Acropolis and Agora in Athens also have some of the best examples of ancient Greek architecture. We will examine the Acropolis and Agora in Athens to understand Greek architecture, planning and city design. Until 480 BC, the earliest versions of the buildings in the Acropolis existed. But in 480 BC, the Persians under Xerxes burned Athens and Acropolis to the ground. After that, the Greeks defeated the Persians. The Acropolis in Athens was rebuilt again in 450 BC. The rebuilding of the Acropolis was begun by Pericles, who ruled from 460 BC to 429 BC. He commissioned artists and architects to build a new city of temples to glorify the gods. The Acropolis at Athens has a remarkable site planning. The main building at the entry was the Propylae. As you enter the Propylae, a view of all the prominent buildings in the Acropolis is seen. The buildings are also positioned at a distance 
that ensures the appreciation of its detail. The central axis of view from the propeller is left free of buildings for a view into the countryside. All the buildings on the Acropolis are designed to be seen. The temples are placed at an angle that enables them to be seen on two sides. It is ensured that if a building cannot be seen from two sides, it is completely hidden. The site plan of the Acropolis shows that there are four main buildings. One, the Temple of Night, which is at the entrance, followed by an entrance building which is known as Propyle and as you enter there are two main temples one the Parthenon and other the Erechtheum and these buildings have a perfect composition of Doric and Ionic order. The two sections of the Acropolis further shows the location of different buildings on Acropolis. The Propylae is the entrance to the Acropolis. It was built around 437 BC. The image shows the existing ruins of the Acropolis here, highlighting the ruins of the Propylae. To reach the Acropolis, people had to enter through the center section of the Propylae and the two wings on either side were never finished. The columns on the outside of the Propylae were Doric whereas the interior columns were ionic. If the Doric order were used in the interior, the height of the roof would make its diameter very large. To overcome this difficulty, the designers used the ionic column inside which is much slender than the Doric columns. Inside the propylae was a large library and picture gallery with a place for people to read and rest. In times of peace, the gates of the propylae were usually left wide open, but when an enemy threatened, the wooden doors of the propylae were closed and there was no other access to the Acropolis. The Parthenon was the most prominent building on the Athian Acropolis and was designed in 447 BC. It is the perfect Doric temple ever built. It was more graceful and was lighter as compared to the temples that were built previously. It embodies the perfection of the Greek system of proportioning and the proportions were based on the proportions of man which is 7 to 1. The best application of entasis and the optical corrections is also seen here in Parthenon. The plan of the Parthenon shows that it is divided into three parts. The external part is the porch known as Pronos, the inner sanctuary is known as Nos and the third part is the treasury part which is known as Opisthodomus. This temple is an octastyle temple. Octastyle means it has eight columns in the porch in front as well as back and 17 columns at the sides. There's a huge ivory gold statue of Athena, which is 11 meters tall, which was carved by Phidus in the sanctuary area. The statue reached the wooden roof of the temple. The temple's altar was placed on the eastern side. The processions and the ceremonies were often held outside and the inside of the temple was not used. During the Christian period, the Parthenon was used as a church and later the Turks converted it into a mosque. The Erechtheum is basically an Ionic temple. It is located at the point of a mythical fight between Poseidon and Athena for the position of Athens. Athena is believed to have won the fight and so Athens was named after her. The Erechtheum was named after Erechtheus, the legendary king of Athens, whose mother was the goddess of the earth and whose father was the fire god. 
He was brought up by Athena and is believed to have judged the fight between them. The plan of the Erechtheum is quite different from that of the Parthenon because it is not a perfect rectangle. It does not have a colonnade surrounding it. It has two porches springing out from the core rectangle of the temple which are at different levels. A large porch on the northern side and eastern side has ionic columns. There is another small porch on the southern side which faces the Parthenon. This porch is built on an elevated ground. This porch has columns in the shape of women called carrots. The carrots are linked to a historical story. They are the people who lived in Asia Minor. They were believed to have fought with the Persians against the Greeks. When the Greeks won, they destroyed the cities of the carrots. They killed all the men and brought back the women as slaves. For revenge, the Greeks copied the carrot slave women in stone and forced them to carry the roof of the Erechtheum for all time. This makes this porch a very unique feature of the temple. This slide shows the temple of Nike. This temple is located just beside the propylae. The Athenians worship Athena Nike in the hope of victory and this temple is dedicated to Athena Nike. It is an ionic temple which has four columns in the front as well as back. The temple looks the same from front and back. As it has four columns, so it is known as tetra style. The columns along the east and west fronts are monolithic columns. The ratio of height to diameter of the columns is 7 is to 1. The cylinder proportions creating an elegance and refinement are not encountered in the normal 9 is to 1 or 10 is to 1 of ionic buildings. This temple is constructed from white marble. The other important part of the city is Agora. The word Agora in Greek refers to the open place of assembly. It is located at the foot of the hills. It is an area where most of the activities of the city took place. That is a gathering place for social, commercial and political activities. Initially, Agora was an open air. But later, it was seen that the marketplace of the city developed around it with a temporary roof covering above it. At Athens also, the Agora was located on the flat land and at the perimeter of the Agora space, there were many buildings which came up. There were civic buildings like stoas. The stoas served as the boundary of the Agora and acted as a center for judicial and shopping activities. They also served as shelters for protection against the heat of the summer and the cold winds of the winter. Few of the stoas here were single story and others were double story. In addition to this, there were few government buildings also like Bulletrion, which were the council chambers. Here the state representatives assembled to confer and decide about public affairs. It had a bank of seats like a theatre and is covered by a roof. There were tholos which were a circular building wherein standing committees of the council dined at the state expenses. There were also jury courts surrounding the Agora in Athens. It gradually developed into the most important gathering and happening place. Dear students, this was all about the ancient Greek architecture. To summarize, we have covered in this lecture initially about the architectural characteristics of the Greek architecture 
which included the main elements the main materials that were used in the building that is the abundance use of marble and also about the main types of buildings that are seen which were the temple and different type of civic buildings after that we have seen the classical greek orders in which we have distinguished between the doric ionic and the corinthian orders we have also seen the greek city planning in which we have seen the plans of the ancient cities as well as the new cities there were three main parts of the cities the acropolis agora and the town we have also discussed about the acropolis which included the main temple that is the parthenon and the erechtheion and at the end we have seen what were the main features of agora i hope everything is clear thank you